Welcome back, Rare Talks. You already know what it is. Another episode up in the next, air. Next if one. you don't know, make sure you go to the YouTube and subscribe right now. Facts. Yeah, we're not putting nothing out on Spotify. Yeah. Everything is on the YouTube. And if you don't know where we YouTube. are right now, we're in Rare Hub Studios. Yeah, the mm-hmm. best podcasting studio in the UK. I say it's the best because it's the vibe. Come you know on. What I'm saying you go to some people's studios and it's just Dead out, done dead. out, doesn't have no vibe. Parting litty every Friday, litty. Come on, that's Kimini. normal. You the thought we're having a rave every week. Turn up, minute. That's how mad it is, isn't it? Trust me. Sometimes I come in there, I can't even leave. Like, this place got a hold of me. 3, 4 a.m., still here, crafting. Come Crazy. On, so, you know what I'm joined by? The craziest, wildest co-host ever. Come on, man. Young CEO in the building, people. Come on. Back with another one, man. And today we're joined by a special guest. Special. You know, we always have to empower men. That's what our thing's about, empowering men. First and foremost. So we've got someone who's a special guest that's going to help men. You know what I'm saying? Because Trust me. we know that men are suffering at the moment. It's meant to be Men's Mental Health Month, but I've no, no one in the room knew this because it's not really something that's pushed to the forefront. Don't talk about it, did it? Thank you very much. Everyone's laughing, but we all know, like, what? What are you talking about? about Everyone looking at me weird, like, raw, like, what? Really? Like, really? Man's worth double-checking. Let me, is he, is he? Because man's so unsure about ourselves that we don't even know that our mental health even matters. So, you know, we always start talking about mental health, but our special guest today, introduce yourself, my brother. Uh, thank you, Ads. So, guys, my name's Vinay Palmer. Mm-hmm. I've been invited by the amazing Ads and Shay. Not yeah. known them long, but we met at an event, and yep. here we are. We're in the studio. I'm a solicitor by profession, criminal lawyer. Yeah. I also, that's part-time, actually, because um, I do different things as well. I do um, mm-hmm. trading, forex, crypto. We, we teach people as well. And mm-hmm. so having sources of income, not yeah. just one, many, so mm-hmm. I like to think of myself as an entrepreneur. <laughs> Straight. And um, yeah, it's good to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Not yeah, a man, it's a robot. pleasure to, to be an um, inspiring person that's doing lots of good things. So trust me. what got you into criminal law? That was number one. What got you into that? Yeah. Well, um, I was at uni mm. and uh, did law. I just wanted to be a lawyer because I thought they earned loads of money. Right. And my mum and dad would be happy as well. Yeah. yeah. I'll get a lot of girls as well, you know, be a lawyer. <laughs> so I, I was, I'm, I'm going to be a lawyer. The only problem was I'm not a good student. I, I right. kept on failing. Mm. And if you look to see what I actually qualified, it was in my late 20s, early 30s, because GCSEs, reset. A-levels, right. reset. Right. Uni, went to the wrong uni. My mates were at another uni. Again, issues there. Mm. And um, then I thought, you know, let me just qualify because I thought that, you know, that's going to be a good thing. Mm. And I never forget, I went to work free in my dad's, because my dad's got properties, mm. conveyancing solicitor, and, and there was another secretary there. Mm. I worked there for free for three months. She knew someone, opened a law firm in Watford mm-hmm. who does criminal law. Mm-hmm. So never had an interest to do criminal law, mm. but I knew I needed a, what we call a training contract. Right. So when I got into it, criminal law is one interesting subject. Uh, unfortunately, it's not... You know, the um, novelty soon wears off because unfortunately we are defending. Right. And when you're defending, you're coming across all kinds of crimes. Sometimes they're in the papers, on TV, okay. you see them. And, you know, it's not, you know, I'm thank God I'm doing it part time now, but that's how I got into it. I've mm-hmm. uh, been working in a firm, well, I was working in a firm since 2008, qualified 2014. Mm-hmm. Then in 2000, and f- actually 2014, I quit the firm. Right. Because I said I can't work for anyone. I need to work for myself. Own boss. Mm, smart. And now I just do the minimum to stay qualified. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I do like it. I like going to court, police station. I'm, I'm the lawyer trying, you know, w- you know, win the judge over, win the prosecutor over. Right. It, you get a buzz out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, you know, I mean, Would you rather week. prosecute or defend? Personally, to be on, if you're looking at morality, yeah. it, it will be prosecution. Yeah, of course. Because you're bringing a case against someone who's been accused. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But don't get it wrong, because sometimes defendants, you know, prosecutors don't always believe the victims. Sometimes yeah. they're saying whatever, right. but they have got a duty to put the case through. And sometimes you get a very innocent defendant as well. You know, someone's just been wrongfully accused. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll never forget some of my friends said, how can you defend a rapist? I said, well, look, that's, women's you said to me, how can you defend a rapist? I said, right. Your brother, imagine if he's wrongfully accused. Mm. This is it. Doesn't he need a lawyer? Doesn't he need someone to put your rights of through course. your case through? So I said, I'm that guy, unfortunately. Mm. Of course. So don't get me wrong. You know, when I go and represent, I'm trying to get them to see the light and trying to get them to plead guilty, trying mm-hmm. to help them mm-hmm. in their best interest. But in answer to your question, Ads, absolutely, I would, from a moral standpoint, prosecute. Prosecute. 
But if you're prosecuting, you, you can't do freelance. You have to be working for the Crown Prosecution Service. Okay. And it's that Monday to Friday, nine to five, which I can't, I can't do. Mm. What, what, what intrigued, what made you want to be your own boss? What was it like the turning point? Because it's always a turning point for everyone. Yeah. In me, I had my turning point. I was the manager in EE. Everything was going well. Money was well, everything. Yeah. yeah. But then what I started to realise was there's, no matter how hard I got up in the company, there's always someone higher than me because yeah. it's not my business. Yes. Right. The company yeah. was owned because I worked for a franchise. So a franchise was owned by a person of called course. Amir. Yeah. So Amir yeah. was the boss. We worked for Amir. Amir yeah. made all the money. Nice. When we're seeing 230,000 yeah. getting into like this and I still doing this, this is Amir's money. Mm. Like we're buying stock from Amir's money. Yeah. Everything's Amir's. So I'm like, raw. I want to be like Amir. I, I want to make yeah. money like a me. I want to have 10 companies like a me. Why do I yeah. have to work my whole life off mm -hmm. yeah. for another man to make him rich? And I'd done a lot for that company. Yeah. But I realised that, no, I don't want to work for anyone anymore. Mm. And I would never tell any... Like, like I was saying this last week. I was listening to even when I was at Pillows about being entrepreneur and this, this exciting thing about money and all this. Mm, yeah. I'll be honest with you, it's not as glamorous as it looks. Nope. Mm. Some days there's no work, there's no money mm. and 100%. you've got to make ends meet. You've 100%. got to try and still make things work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're not even knowing where anything's even coming from because it's going so slow. But it's that determination when it does pop off, it's going to win. Yeah. And that faith Absolutely. that you have. But what would you, what was the turning point for you personally? Yeah, yeah. um, I um, I was going to follow my dad's footsteps. He's got properties and I thought I'd be, you know, I'm going to business. Mm. And the turning point came in actually 2011. I was right. a trainee solicitor mm. and a friend of mine invited me to a network marketing event okay. meeting. Right. And, you know, I've come there skeptical, all kinds of, you know, things I'm thinking about the industry. But one thing I realized there that there are professional people there and they're trying to help you. Right. Obviously, that's the way the business works. Mm -hmm. So that got me into really thinking entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. And that got me thinking, wait a minute, I don't have to, like you said, I don't have to climb the corporate ladder. I can own the ladder. Right. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's more intriguing. Of course. But I had it in me as well because I wanted to open up my own law firm. Yeah. And, you know, I saw the boss and, you, and just like you said, Ads, you know, the bosses, they're making like, you know, a quarter of a million, half a million a year. Mm -hmm. And we're getting like, you know, as a trainee lawyer in London, if you do know, criminal lawyers get paid 16 grand a year on a training contract. Whoa, 16 yeah, grand. Training, yeah. And then if, once you qualify right. in criminal, because I'm talking about legal aid. Mm -hmm. So government funded lawyers. Okay. You know, looking 20, 25K with overtime. That means you go and police station at night and the weekends. <laughs> then you can push it up to like 30, 40K. Mm. So I was thinking, okay, man, all that work, all those exams that I failed, right. <laughs> and all the money, as you know, as well, to do the course, the law course, and I'm, I'm going to be earning like 30, 40K for the rest of my 50s and 60s. Mad. I don't want that. Yeah. So I thought, let me just do, and you know, network marketing, man, that empowers you big time, reading books, listening to audios. Trust me. And I thought, let me just do it. I quit the firm. And for that six months to a year, I've never been broke that broke in my life. <laughs> I had ever been that broke. I said to my wife Pretty now, I said, man. look, when I met you, I didn't have 10 pounds to my name. Straight. Thank God you paid for the meal because it, it, I'm in serious overdrive. I was going to mm. bounce or something. And the only thing was I had, um, I had a car which looked kind of decent. And when you think you're a lawyer trainee, you think, all right, it must be doing all right. Right. As I remember going to the cash machine and just praying, just 10 pounds would just come out just to cover something. Mad. And I thought to myself, there's got to be light at the end of this tunnel. Mm -hmm. I took a plunge. You know, everyone in the law firm was like, you're making a big mistake. You know how hard it is to qualify. You know, you're so lucky to be here. And I was like, don't give me that. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to go to the top. I don't want to, I don't want this life. Mm -hmm. So those six months, I'm trying to build relations with firms and clients. Mm -hmm. Only problem is I'm new, not that experienced. Right. Mm -hmm. So it took me a while, but magic happened once. I'll never forget it. She was in Reading. Go ahead. I, I, remember, I remember I used to write to 10 law firms a day, emails. Sick. My name's da da da, da. I can do criminal law. Yeah. Whatever. Rejection, no, we're not into it. I remember going to firms, trying to find the, 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 the senior partner, waiting for him. He goes, he don't meet you, I want to meet him. Because mm. yeah, of all these books and like Les Brown says things like this. And I'm thinking, I want to do it. Yeah. Reading, they said, come and come for an interview. And I'm in L East London. I'm thinking, oh man, hour and a half to get there. Yeah. Let me just go. Why not? Got down there and they said, yeah, we just want to see if you're confident. I said, look, I'm, I'm not even qualified. I'm just about to qualify. And they said, uh, no, we, we, we've got work. And everyone says they've got work. Yeah. When they had work, <laughs> they had the largest Romanian clientele following 
and straight away magic happened. Mm -hmm. I never forget that feeling. I actually felt like a somebody. Mm -hmm. They gave, can you go to this court? I was like, yeah. Can you go to this court? I said, yeah. Can you go to this police station? Straight, because I'm, I'm, I'm free, I'm young, I'm single, mm -hmm. I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. My invoice is just two, three hundred pounds. I was like, oh my God, I made 400 pounds today. Mm -hmm. Next day I made 500 pounds. Next day I made like seven. Next day I made 200, 300. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let me write down something. I want to earn 100 grand a year. True. So I broke mm -hmm. it down. 100 grand a year, how much do I have to earn per day? Mm -hmm. mm. 2,274 pounds. Mm. My goal was fixate. I want to earn 274 pounds a day because I want to earn 100 grand a year. Right. That year was the best year. Then the subsequent years, I remember going to the law firm when mm -hmm. they used to call me for like office parties mm -hmm. and I'm earning as much as the partners are earning. I'm on 120, 130, sometimes 150 grand a year. And I'm thinking, wow, thank God that I took the biggest plunge and there was light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And now I'm, I'm working part-time, but I'm earning what I used to earn when I used to work full-time. Right. I'm in court one day a week, sometimes once every two weeks, you know, go a little police station here and there. So in answer to your question, mm. when I first started, it was a rocky road. It wasn't easy. It was, um, you know, it was bad times then because my relationship was going bad. Right. Because I come out of a big relationship as well. No money, it was mini depression almost. Mm -hmm. But thank God that happened. I remember just, you know, from there, you know, the account and VAT registered. And I started doing all kinds of things as well, apart from law as well, mm -hmm. mm. into different areas. That was, give us an example. Yeah. So I became a course junkie. I, I remember 2014, I did the Bob Proctor course. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Proctor, who's passed away now. Massive success and mindset coach. Um, the guy that talks about paradigms. Paradigm, is he, yeah. Is he, yeah. Is he dead? He, is he, he passed away just a few months ago. No yeah. way. Yeah. All of a sudden as well. Yeah, no, it wasn't like he was hospitalized. Yeah, just. And I just, we just met the guy before COVID in LA. Went, me and my wife went to LA for the paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. And subsequently he came to UK in March in, in, um, at the, um, oh, the, the big hall in City. Because mm -hmm. for our company, he came as one of the speakers. And then right. the Subsequently, oh, a year Bob later. Proctor as, as a speaker? Yeah, we had Bob Proctor. We had 10,000 people at the, um, what was that place where Tony Robbins does his- You um, don't, know Bob, you don't know who Bob Proctor is. Yeah. Big fish. Trust me. Bob Big Proctor, fish. If, once I watched The Secret, I fell in love with Bob Proctor. I was mm -hmm. like, this guy. So I did his course, cost me eight grand. Uh, sorry, $8,000. Mm -hmm. So whatever, four, four or five grand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did that. I was like, I need to get it. Because I thought if I can get it in my head, magic's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Then did the Forex trading course, cost me 20 grand. Whoa. Yeah. Landmark, social media marketing, hypnosis course, Tony Robbins like four day events, success resources, you know, events like um, Grant Cardone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, now, right now, this year, I've got people like, like Dan Pena I want to see. Right, you know, yeah, Dan yeah, he's, he's a joke, I like him. If you want some raw, he's someone raw. just to swear at you and just- He don't care. He's the man. Yeah. Old school, he's old school, he doesn't care. Yeah. He doesn't care. But yeah. you know what, one thing I realize um, is that the people who provide these courses, mm -hmm. they live a certain life, they are multi-millionaires and I want that. I want to be one of them. And right. that's where me and my wife got involved in the teaching side. So that's how we help people learn about trading forex, right. trading crypto, holding crypto, buying crypto. So it's so we do events literally all over the UK. If I look at my diary, I'm up and down in you know, Manchester, you know, Coventry, Nottingham, mm -hmm. East, West, South, West London. Uh, tomorrow I'll be in central London in Allgate. We right. booked up one of the lecture theatres of David Game. Right. So yeah, man, life's just been, it's just complete U-turn. No, that's mad, yeah, but you had to, but I see, I, see, I feel like, uh, you know, they say high risk, high reward, because like, you could look back and think, man, if I didn't take that plunge or bet it all, I'd be just on a, a basic job, not achieving much, but your life has sort of turned mm -hmm. for the better. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of people sort of have to make a risk, because life is, I feel mm -hmm. like life is sort of at its height when you are sort of putting it on the line, just to say, if I make it, now you're in, the, now you're in, in this position sitting there telling us, yeah. but rather than just be a regular nine to five worker, <laughs> ain't got much going on, life is just basic. That's not the move for, for me, especially as I'm trying to be an entrepreneur myself, I feel like, you could take life to a new height when you sort of embark on that journey of I want to be my own boss. Cause, cause a lot of say it, but many just don't really fulfill yeah. it, don't they? Hundred percent. And it's also it's one thing. I think the biggest thing is you got to stop caring what people think Facts. of mm. you. I never forget. I remember because I started <laughs> yeah. a network marketing company, a law firm, and I told someone, and this one lawyer told all the other lawyers, and I became like the laughing stock of the firm. Right. And I never forget. One day I come in, and they're all like, you know, kind of ganging up on me, googling what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and and I just decided at that point. I'm gonna show you, uh, you, I'm gonna show you now, watch. I'm gonna show everyone in this floor. Love that, man. 
And uh, yeah, they, they laugh and whatever. But then eventually now, when I start going to the parties now, they're like, oh, you know, I see what's going on. You know, amazing. You know, That's which country I mean. you're going to now. <laughs> do you That's know, good, do, do you know what's the most beautifulest thing? Um, proving people wrong. I, Trust I me. think that's yeah. what drove me to go as far as I've gone with my podcasting. Because you know what? If someone at the start, I never forget what the person said. It's like their words ring in my eardrums every time I want to give up. Like daggers. You think I'm ever going to let you do a podcast? I looked at him and thought, you think you could ever stop me? Mm-hmm. Mm. You think you could ever stop me from doing what I want to do? In life in general, I mean, nice. every time someone's told me that I can't do something, it's it. drove me to do that thing 10 times more. It's like, you've you've created a monster. Mm-hmm. Anytime anyone mm-hmm. does that to me, if you told me, oh, don't speak about women, what? Women don't like you, you speak about women a lot. Mm. I'm going to speak about women a hundred more times now. <laughs> like, you told me something <laughs> yeah, and you yeah. go against me, I'm yeah. going to go to every length to get to the best. Does yeah, it make sense? Yeah, I'll do yeah, any, exactly. I'll go to any length to be the best at whatever I'm being. And I feel like sometimes them things are actually blessings from God that you actually, someone even said that to you and f- made you feel like that. Right. Then that that was the, you know, every time you wanted to stop, you're thinking, yeah. I can't let them see me you, like that, you know. Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah, let yeah. them <laughs> see me like that. <laughs> well, got, I don't know what I gotta do, but yeah. I gotta succeed. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's that's why sometimes, sometimes them things are actually good things yeah. in years to come. Like, I wish I could shake that guy's hand, whoever said that. Yeah. I know yeah. is, but I wish I could shake his yeah. hand now. Say. I mean, I was just thinking about it, cause I went to the gym earlier and I always, I don't listen to music anymore cause I want to learn. Mm-hmm. I listen to not podcasts, but motivational audios right. by mm-hmm. like, Arnold Schwarzenegger, John Sienna, Conor right, McGregor. Okay. Mm. And Arnold Schwarzenegger, just what you mentioned now, he says, if someone says to me, you can't, it's impossible. He goes, that's amazing. Cause I'll be the first to do it then. Yeah. Mm. And I'm listening to this while I'm at the gym. I'm getting inspired. I'm like, damn, Arnold Schwarzenegger, man, what a mindset, man. What have you not Trust done? Me. But don't, don't, don't go to the gym with that mindset too much, you know. <laughs> See, you're not heavy weights on you. Don't say, I can do this. <laughs> As I would tell you, I've injured myself. <laughs> I've injured myself so much at the gym. <laughs> no, no, mindset is key, innit? No, I think, I think mindset is essentially, that's sort of the, the most vital part to achieving. Because on the other hand, there are some people who can say you can't do it and then you don't do it if you allow them yeah. to sort of creep in and sort of believe, oh, you know, like maybe I can't do it. Because like, that moment of doubt can just ruin your whole, do you know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. I mean, I just put on my Insta the story now and there's a quote by Henry Ford, if you think you can or if you think you can't, you're both right. Yeah. So if you believe that you can do it, you're going to go and do it. And but just, like Bob Proctor says, you've got to hold on to that vision and hold on to it long enough for mm-hmm. it to materialize. Right. So I love, I mean, I just love, like I said, I'm a course junkie. Mm-hmm. I, you know, if there's a course I'm, I'm doing, I'm going there, I'll spend money. I spend, you know, if I look into my law degree as well as um, all the courses I've done, traveling like, you know, Asia, America, over a hundred grand just on courses. Mm. I never forget once, it was in 2017, I met a guy. And uh, he's in the city, he's like, a, um, he sells properties. Mm-hmm. You know, well-to-do guy. And he says, I've spent, and it was stuck in my head, I spent 160 grand on personal self-development. Because I earn 60 grand a month now. And I <laughs> was like, guy. say no more. <laughs> say my no guy. more. I was like, you need to get it here. You got Invest to in it. yourself, innit? Invest in yourself. You can't beat that, isn't it? That's yeah. the biggest investment you make is in yourself. Yeah, it's a lifetime. It's a lifetime investment as well. It's not even like for now. It's like for your your generation and children. Generation because you've got yeah. some different type of yeah. knowledge that you can drop on them. Pass stuff um, on as well, isn't it? Hundred yeah. percent. Like I'm looking at my like children. I like, got young one year old and a three year old, and all I'm thinking is they're gonna do what I do, not what I say. Mm-hmm. So if I'm a good parent, if I go out and try and be the best I can, and in all areas, you know, I don't want to just be, I don't know, I go to gym every day, mm-hmm. you know, I'm at house, I was doing the dishes in front of my little ones, like, you watch me do the dishes, because you should do, you know, this as well. Right, 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 right. You know, and then I'm taking him to meetings as well, entrepreneurial meetings as much as Come I can. Come on. I was doing forex charts, put him on my lap. He's just smashing the screen almost, but I'm thinking subconsciously, just get this, because if you yeah. get this. It's true, man. Well, you've, got, you've got the key already. Be an example, isn't it? Yeah, and I feel yeah, it's definitely important. I think, and I think it's it's more so like having generational wealth is, is is I think an area that a lot of people don't, don't even think. So like, if I'm not here when I'm older, mm. like the kids don't have to struggle. Yeah, like maybe you might not just give them it, yeah. but but for them to be able to walk into something and sort of prosper without the struggles maybe you went through, yeah. do you know what I mean? And, and having that platform there for them ready. And even if they didn't want to do it, maybe you might invest in a, a restaurant or a small business, wherever yeah. it is. But just having that financial setup ready for them, yeah, to go into it. I think like when you like so when you're thinking a long game, it's it's all worth it. Like in the uh, beginning, isn't it? It's there's too many reasons to do this. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. mean the reasons people you know people are scared to fail. Yeah, I remember reading a quote. You know, if uh, if you don't come from a rich family, then a rich family must come from you. Yes, mm. and I'm not talking about riches. I mean, if you read think books like Think and Grow Rich, yeah, there's like different points about a rich life. 
and money's at the bottom. Right. Money's at the bottom. He goes, right. money. He goes, and Napoleon Hill says it. I was listening to an audio of his after I read the book. Yeah. And he goes, if you think about it, think and grow rich. We're talking about rich in wealth, health, mindset, mm -hmm. positivity, and all this. And, you know, being a person of influence, being, right. you know, a person who leaves someone in a position of increase. And he goes, money is right at the right bottom. At the bottom. But you do need that as well. <laughs> of course. You know, you, without money, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, uh, um, question I had for you um, give us a benefit of why we should get into crypto. Because a lot of people yeah. will say, it's an uncertain market and it's like gambling. So yeah. I've met a lot of people that have said to me, get into crypto, but nobody's given me a defined answer right. of yeah. what benefit does it bring for me? Actually, I know the benefit already, but I'm yeah. saying, what would you say to someone who says, what benefit does crypto yeah. bring oh, for my yeah. investing? First of all, cryptocurrency is, if I want to describe it in layman's terms, mm -hmm. it's money in a computer. Okay. Money online. Mm -hmm. Let's think of everything that's going online. What is not going online? You know, mm -hmm. buying cars online, people getting to get getting together with people online, getting married online, right, right. internet banking, email. When's the last time we took a letter and wrote it out? And it's you know, true. it's it's not really heard of. Mm -hmm. So if everything's going online and money, why would it not go online? So what I'm trying to say is, cryptocurrency is the future of all payments. Right. We're gonna very soon be a cashless society, mm -hmm. and. If we're talking about generational wealth, my God, this is going to be the, and we're at the beginning of it. Because mm -hmm. I remember thinking, it was back in 2018, I was going to buy like, um, Bitcoin's really cheap then, I was going to buy like quite a lot of them. Right, and right. I thought, no, no, let me not buy it, let me go India. I came back and the price went double. Of course. And I was thinking, you know, then obviously from, the, it, I'm talking about when crypto was like 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. So I was going to buy a good amount of cryptos, I was like ready, I didn't do it. And you know how the story goes, yep. you know, for 10, 20, 50, and it went just skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. It's a bit low at the moment. And I remember feeling really upset one day in my in my room. I was almost crying. I was like, I can't believe it. I missed this um, right. this this yeah. big yeah. thing. Of yeah. course. And then my senior, <laughs> he said to me recently, my senior, bearing in mind, he made thirteen million in crypto last year. He withdrew four million. Now, when I say withdrew, because a lot of people on paper become very asset rich. Yeah. But when you pull out four million liquid cash, see it there. And he said, you ain't missed nothing because you don't know something about altcoins. And then you probably hear them because you're in the papers. And yes, because you can gamble on Forex and crypto, mm -hmm. but you could gamble on it. You can gamble on properties. You can yep. gamble with your life. You can gamble in cars. Mm -hmm. It's a gambling, it's a mindset. So, you know, if you're going to look at crypto as the, um, the lottery ticket to go and do something crazy and make crazy money, you might as well go to casino, probably have better odds there. Right. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to crypto, the lack of knowledge when you invest is just the killer. Mm -hmm. So it's the biggest financial wealth transfer in our history. It's like, you know, my dad bought properties. I don't know if you, from your parents, you might know that properties in the 90s mm -hmm. were going cheap. I mean, like, you know, hundreds of Yeah, yeah super cheap. And the credit cards, they want to give you, you go in a bank, you credit card, 50 grand, here you go. Yep. They, you, now you can't get loans like that. You mm. can't get a credit rating. So my dad, no, no. he did something crazy. He bought five properties on his credit cards, <sighs> one after the other. Now, I never forget, my dad's an inspiration in that respect. My family and his friends, and because my dad's a market trader. Mm -hmm. He was in East Ham shopping all for 10 years, 94 to 2004, Jeez. selling artificial jewelry, right. black hair cry products right. in the market. Yeah, 10 years. Market, I used to be really embarrassed by that, by the way. Because no, I used to work. Yeah, you're a hustler, man. You're a hustler. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah you're, you're one of your schoolmate comes in. Oh, you want a pound for that scrunchie? Yeah, 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 yeah. You sell me that, and I'm like, oh. I used to hide. My mum used to tell me I used to hide. I'm like, mum, I have to hide. I want to get bullied in school. I was like, thank God, because dad, all the money he made, Working seven days a week, six days shops open, seven days buying on your feet from like nine to six. Not easy. Yeah. Bought properties on credit cards. Everyone's calling him crazy. After 10 years, when property started to skyrocket, Sky and my dad yeah. retired in his 40s, people were like, now people's stories changed then. Of oh, your course. dad was so lucky. And I'm thinking, no, my dad didn't listen to people like you. He knew. Thank God. Mm -hmm. So there was an advantage that he took when prices were, you know, because timing is everything. Mm -hmm. Trust me. So cryptocurrency, we are at the beginning of an era, I believe. And, you know, unfortunately in this day and age, especially on social media, a lot of people, a lot of scams about, yeah. you know, I've got, there's 20 fake profiles of me Really? And what they do is they message all my contacts saying, Look, I will trade for you. I'll get you. Send me, you know, a Bitcoin or send me this. And people messaging me, I sent you this. Some of the, my wife, actually, I sent you 4,000 Bitcoin. Shh. We're like, phone the bank right now. I go, because they're making fake profiles. That's mad. And they're saying, you know, and if, if I see an Instagram page and it says Bitcoin miner, account manager, I block them straight away. Mm -hmm. Because that what they're saying, because look, for me, in answer to your question, Shay, we were talking about it before. Mm -hmm. The problem is, if any company 
person ask for money for them to invest for you, I'm not doing it. Too many right. red flags. Of course. Because who are you first of all? I don't even know you. Are you regulated? Facts. So what we do is we teach people. I mean, if I ask everyone a question here, guys, who do you trust with your money? What would you say? Myself. Exactly. That's about it. Yeah. So what the company is saying is that way you learn how to trade your own money. You right. learn how to invest your own money. Okay. So it's financial education. And obviously there's two things. Number one is if you were to look into crypto or for or whatever, you're looking to trading currency or buying and holding, mm -hmm. you get yourself a regulated broker. You know, you've heard of apps like um, Binance or yeah, Metamask or, you know, uh, Polino uh, Polonix or whatever. These are, uh, they hold your money. They're regulated. So you've got peace of mind. Mm -hmm. You execute the trades. Now, if you go crazy, that's on, on it. That's on your fault. Mm -hmm. So it's all about, it, we need to start somewhere. Of course. And, you know, this is something I wish, I wish. I mean, I'm looking at these young guys here. Mm. One said he's at uni. Mm. And I'm thinking, damn, when I was at uni, all I wanted to do was have a good time. Trust me. I was getting drunk. I was getting <laughs> parties, <laughs> you know, chasing girls. Yeah. Club, you know, Normal, Monday yeah. night club, you know. And Normal. That's all I was doing. I wish I was into like crypto entrepreneurial ways of making money, multiple sources of income. It was the last thing I was like, forget that. I want to have fun in life. Yeah. You know, and but knowledge so is key. for me, crypto is, oh my God, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm begging some of my family members. I'm right. like, just look at it. No, it's too, I'm like, look, I'm show my, I remember showing my sister my screen, I'm like, look at this. <laughs> she goes, yeah, but, and then all these excuses come out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I'm, not, I'm not gonna guarantee or promise anything, but you know, small investments can turn into big. It really can. You know, returns. Yeah. So. I think, you know, Dan Pena said one thing and it sticks to me in my mind. I don't know if we're allowed to swear on it. Yeah, of course. Okay. Because anything you want, man. Dan Pena, I've got this, it's, it's on my phone as well. I put it on my story sometimes. Dan Pena said, he was, someone was interviewing and he goes, let me ask you a question. When your grandchildren, mm -hmm. when you're older, when you have grandchildren and they're going to come and ask you this question, gee, grandma, gee, grandpa, what the fuck were you doing when the biggest wealth transfer in right. history was happening? Mm -hmm. What the fuck? Were you doing? doing it. And that hits me. I'm like, oh my God, my grandchildren ain't gonna ask me that. I'm like, listen, I was hustling. I was getting in there. I was learning. I was making mistakes. I was falling down. Mm -hmm. You know, in 2013, this is when I didn't have 10 pounds to my name. I actually lost a lot of money and right. that was my own fault. Okay. I lost mine and my dad's and many other people. I mean, me and my dad's collective is like almost 150 to mm -hmm. 200 K. Mm -hmm. And collectively your friend's money was almost a million. And it was all to do, to cut a long story short, with someone saying, I'll invest for you. Right. And, you know, these are the returns. And the returns come in good, a little bit, and the pot became bigger. Mm -hmm. And the next thing, you know, it all went, you know, sorry, the returns are not coming in. It's coming in and just, you know, long me off. Right. And right. That, was, uh, that was hard to get over. I mean, my dad would still remind me of that loss. You know, still to this <laughs> day. Uh, but from that day, I decided on two things. Number one is, no one's doing it for me, I'm doing it. Right. Number two is, I'm only going to invest money I'm willing to lose. That's it. So if it's 500, it's, it's 500. That's the key it's thing, 100, isn't it? It's 100. It's a big lesson, but it's the biggest blessing uh, in disguise, I believe. That's the thing, but you, you have to be willing to, as I said, that anything's risky, like you said, and I think you have to be willing to lose as well as a sort of win, but I think having knowledge behind what you may potentially lose is better. So it's like, if I know why I might lose this money, as opposed to just putting, putting money in something I don't know nothing, like nothing about, it's going to hurt a lot more than if I knew that. Exactly. I would have moved a bit differently. And I think, even like you said, like crypto, like um, Bitcoin, that's like a, if you want instant funds, casino is more desirable, yeah. but like crypto is yeah. like a long game type it of future based game. thing, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, 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 not, I didn't delete the app, but I don't check the app mm -hmm. when, you know, my cryptocurrency wallets that I'm holding because what's the point of giving myself unnecessary heart attack? You know, one right, minute right. it's up and I'm like, damn. Next thing is like, whoa, <laughs> you know, like 70% dip and you're like, whoa, but you just got to get ready for that. Right. And you just have to grow a certain risk tolerance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, last night I was listening to a guy called Mark Douglas and he's passed away now, but he was talking about psychology mm -hmm. and how you can't emotionally be attached to any invest. Well, tra he's talking about trading and you can't have that emotional attachment. Now, mm -hmm. and I'm learning that slowly but surely. And you know what? I think I've been doing, I'm a course junkie, personal self development, you know, reading books, attending seminars and all these kind of things. But the biggest learning was finding somebody who has what it is that I want. Mm. and exclusively listening to them right purely yeah so i was told my little brother he wants to get into you know different things i go look just do one thing forget everything else just find someone who's super successful in it or who has got what it is that you want mm -hmm. and just listen to whatever they say don't listen to anyone else it's true don't listen to anyone else even your mom and dad it's it true. even your mom and dad don't listen to them and i think especially when investing like do you feel like because i know because I, I hear a lot of people like uh they might invest like in 
in Bitcoin or, or whatever yeah. in crypto and then like there might be a dip and they'll panic sell and they'll get rid of it. Oh no. Yeah, but then exactly. if yeah. you're thinking long game, yeah. it's like don't it if it's like a five year plan, just leave it. Let, let it sit there. Like, 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 but, but I think they're treating it like a okay, I got twenty pounds cash out. It's like no, you gotta leave it for like a good yeah. two, three years. And I and I think I think that's what also scares a lot of people, not understanding that it's not for the short term uh, sort of gain of money, in it. No, it's, it's like not. a long term thing. Unless you're trading, if you're trading crypto, yes, that's different. Okay, because I've got friends and stuff. There, you know, I don't trade crypto as much as I trade forex, but then you're looking, you're getting in and out. You can do something called scalping. Okay, where you could be in a trade, you, you know, you're, you're going long on Bitcoin or short, but you could be with that in in thirty seconds if you want. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I was with somebody yesterday who's in aviation and he goes, I scalp. I mean, I, I take four pips or something, which is a short movement. And he goes, I'm out in 10 seconds. Right. Bang, I've like, you know, made whatever, 5% or 1% or whatever. So there's so many ways to do it. Right. And you just don't know if you've got a knack for it. Yeah. Unless you give it a go. So True. I always, you know, I'm the type of guy, you know, I don't want to have any regrets in life. Mm-hmm. I want to do it. And if I fail, you know what? So be it. For, At least for I tried. Real. For real. And then let's move on to the next you know, thing. <laughs> how yeah. do you balance um, family life with business? Because obviously, if you're doing so much yeah. things, how do you balance yeah. your family life with that? Well, in the beginning, it was um, there was no balance. Okay. I never forget once we learned this. Um, they said if you look at super successful people, mm-hmm. they don't have a balanced life. And I remember them saying, you know, <laughs> having a balanced life is a middle class myth. Okay. They said mm-hmm. if you look at all the greatest, like Bill Gates, Elon Musk, they exclusively I mean, probably the family life suffered. Yeah. They had to go and dive in. So I don't think that's, um, it's something which is for the rest of your life, mm-hmm. but there was a certain period yeah, where they just went crazy. Yeah. So in answer to your question, um, when I was doing law, and I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm 12 to 18 hours a day. I'm going to police station at two in the morning, wake mm-hmm. up six in the morning to go court for the same guy. Right. So I was working many hours, but I was single. Mm-hmm. And uh, mum and dad were like, you just do what you got to do, isn't it? They, they lost, you know, since I was young, they just thought this guy, I don't know what he's doing in life. Cause I was just crazy, just you know, doing whatever. So they gave up on me a long time ago. Right. So thankfully I didn't have, but when I got married, that's when I realized, wait a minute, man, I can't be doing this. So first of all, my wife would come with me, you know, okay. come with me, just chill in the car, go to a whatever hotel or coffee shop or something. And then, you know, when we had kids, then it became where, you have to, you know, I remember learning that whatever you're doing, whatever time you've allocated for something specific, like family time mm-hmm. or health, gym mm-hmm. or business, give it 100% while you're there. You have to. So if I'm with family, you know, put my phone away. I'm not going to be on Instagram, okay, like okay. checking. I'm with, with family. Mm-hmm. And if I'm with my wife, I'm gonna be, if we're on a date night or something, just be with the wife or with my son. So in this, it was kind of balancing it in that respect. But I think where the magic, well, when the magic happened, where things started to get better was when you have a system which self runs. Mm -hmm. So it it brings me on to the next topic, which is a residual passive income. Okay. So this term, you know, is thrown about people that, what is it? Cut a long story short. I'm looking for something that I can do once and get paid again and again and again. Yes. So let's look into, let's look at what that means. Michael Jackson, Usher, whatever, old school, even old school, new school. You make a song and it's a hit. Wherever it's played, podcast, radio, in a club, you are getting an income without you doing the, you've, you've sung the song once. Yeah. J.K. Rowling, she wrote Harry Potter. She's a billionaire. That was it, straight. It gets sold anyway. She gets a residual reoccurring mm-hmm. income without mm-hmm. her going to work. Mm-hmm. Now, if we've been blessed with the talent of a Michael Jackson Usher or, or J.K. Rowling, that's great. But unfortunately, majority don't have that talent. Mm-hmm. So what I was thinking, what are other things that can give me an income like this? Properties. You get a property and it's on rent. You get an income without you going to work. Yeah. So my dad has, has properties. He has tenants there. And he gets an income from that. Yeah. Uh, even though my dad did say to me today that one of the tenants is gone, it's not, that income stopped now. We need to get another tenant in. Yeah, but you, you got to yeah, you got to have some kind of intervention. I'm not yeah. saying you can just like, go to sleep. So, mm-hmm. network um, network marketing. Mm-hmm. You have a team of distributors or whatever. They're doing the work. They're building their own business, but that contributes to your business. And what's the other thing is trading. Mm-hmm. Trading. You put on a trade. You could leave or trade on for weeks and months, and that income is coming as long as you're in the right trade. Yeah. So if you have a residual income, that's when you don't have to go to work. So right now, I spend most time at home. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's something which I've always wanted to do. I wake up, you know, without an alarm clock. My mm-hmm. children are the alarm clock. Right. Then I can always take him to nursery and I'll go gym. And then I'll bring him back. And um, in the meanwhile, I'm on the charts. I'm meeting the team members. If I have, we do events almost every other day. Mm-hmm. But team members go there. If I go, I take my son with me. So I, I, I'm there with him. If I've got an event in central London, I'm on stage. Mum, dad, why don't you come as well? You can see me as well. I'll talk about you and you know, things like this. So mm-hmm. 
now it's um you know grafting for three to five years hard now it's come a place where i'm, I'm i've got all the time in the world i never forget right you know, bob proctor said he goes you will never realize how much free time you have when you don't have to think about money worry about money mm -hmm. you've got all that's the time in the world to be honest. that's big that's big money like so like, like so like would you say you, you're at a point of like financial freedom now i mean don't get me wrong i'm, yeah, I'm not a millionaire okay and i'm on my way mm -hmm. um but I'm, I'm very um let's say comfortable yeah and I realised, I remember saying to my wife, this wasn't even that long ago, actually. It's just a few years ago. I go, Rupa, have you realised we are never going to have to work ever again now? That's I goals, mean, it was man. just like the biggest That's weight goals. off your chest. Yeah, yeah. I was like, we don't have to go to work ever, but we will go to work because it's fun. If it's fun. Like, I go to court once a week, I love it. <laughs> That's boss, man, I, I love it. I'm in my suit. I wear the suit finally because I don't have to wear a suit every day. Mm. I get ready and I go there. And when I'm there, other lawyers are like complaining about, oh my God, the rates are so bad. This happened, that happened. Boss, and they're talking to me and I'm so energetic and like, you know, I'm, I'm having fun. And they're like, you know, you're mm. just having fun here. Like, you know, you're, you know, we don't even see you here, first of all. Yeah. You always come in a nice suit. They're always like saying you're in a nice suit. Because I rarely wear the suit. That's why the suit yeah. looks quite nice because I don't really wear it that much. Yeah. And I'm there doing my thing and I get out and I'm like, okay, cool. Let's, look, what should we do now? Let me go for a little lunch. Let me go. They're running to the next case. So I think um, in mm. answer to your question in the beginning, it was very heavily weighted where it was no family time. I mean, yeah. seven days. I remember going on holiday, I wouldn't go for more than five days mm -hmm. because I'm thinking about all the money I'm losing. And especially when you're Indian, you don't want to lose any money. You, know, you're <laughs> money. you don't want to lose any money with a no one penny. So I'm saying to my wife, we need to leave this country because I am losing money. I need to get back. Because when I'm not at work, I don't get paid. Right. I don't want that income. I don't want, I, I want a passive, passive income. income. Do the work once and get paid again and again and again and again. So I'm finding ways Perfect. just to do that. Wherever it is, I want to find it, I want to do it. Mm, that's the right way. Nothing what advice do you have for someone who's scared to leave their nine to five? Do you have any advice yeah. for them? Taking a you know, plunge it's, like you it's, did. It's interesting. And um, I'm like, I'm, I'm, like I said, course junkie, Kevin Trudeau. And he said, if you don't have, and it's a very good thumb rule, mm -hmm. but I don't think many people follow it. I didn't follow it. If you don't have six months, like if, if you're out of work and for six months you can't survive, you, you shouldn't leave work. You need to have it saved up okay. there so you have a peace of mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, coming across people in, in, you know, when you meet people who are very entrepreneurial, really well, somewhere on the line, they've taken the plunge. Someone had to. They, they just had to. I don't know. Maybe you, you'll find people who haven't, but they're probably playing it safe. Mm -hmm. So anyone I've seen has taken the biggest hit somewhere and then their biggest hit became their biggest success right. because of that reason. So in answer to your question, mm -hmm. I think like, it's funny because we're just talking about it just yesterday, my brother, you know, because we live in a big family and we're, we're in the process of moving. Mm -hmm. We're moving up north, slightly up north, Bedfordshire. Okay. And he works in London. And I said, look, just quit your job. He goes, no, I can't do that. I go, man, if you quit your job, I think it's the best thing ever. He goes, no. I go, how are you going to commute from there second hour? But he wouldn't do it because just some people just don't have that in them. Yeah. And, you know, before I'm on a mission to try and change people's mindsets on that, mm -hmm. which is the wrong thing. Because if someone don't want to do it, they just don't want to do it. Yeah. You, you respect yeah. that. Yeah. And now I do respect that. Um, but in answer to your question, I think it's, I think it's necessary somewhere. And I'm not saying from day one and do what I did. And then you become literally, you know, I took a calculated risk mm -hmm. of living with parents. So I was like, okay, what's the worst that's going to happen to me? I live with my parents. What are they going to do? Kick me out of the house? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Indian families don't really do that. So I'm thinking, thank God. You know? so I'm like, okay, what's the worst that could happen? I'm not going to be in the streets. But, right. Yeah, but then when true. you hear stories like Eric Thomas, he was in the streets. His mum kicked him out. Mad. And then, you, and then now he's a super massive success. Um, and you know, you get inspired by these stories. But man, you, you get the greats and you listen to their stories. It wasn't a pretty picture. Homeless, yeah. no money, bad relationship, lost a business, yeah. bankrupt this lawsuit and then it's even it gets even worse sometimes went to prison mm. you know some people gone to prison for whatever, for whatever reason so yeah. I think the plunge needs to be somewhere somewhere along the line I believe yeah. if, if anybody yeah. wants to get at you which social medias can they get at you what's your socials yeah I mean I've got a website as well okay, uh, yeah. palmanet.com uh, yeah. but my name I am Vinay Palmer yeah. on Instagram you know I'm always like marketing I've got some people I had people in India managing it for me but yeah. you know through there we you know literally if you see where we are, we're not on social media, we do physical events. Mm -hmm. So we're always me. I'm always attending events. That's how we obviously yeah, met as we well. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, Instagram is probably the easiest one because it's uh, fun doing it as well. Mm -hmm. um, but through there, through the website or through word of mouth. I mean, you guys are obviously, you have a wide audience. Mm -hmm. um, we're, you know, I always say to people, look, if you're going to learn this skill, number one is 
Go to the website and see me. I'm a qualified lawyer. If I'm going to do a scam, why would I do a scam like this? I'm going to, I don't want to get disbarred from the law society. Right. Mm. So that's number wow. one. Number two is you're not going to get a return. So we don't say to people, right, you know, Shay, give us X amount and we'll give you 5% a day or 5% a week or 5% right. a month. We don't do that. Yeah. We don't give you a return. We don't promise anything because we're not doing that. We're going to give you the education, which mm. is a US company. They teach you how you're going to become the investor. Mm -hmm. You invest your own money. Right. Is it easy? I wouldn't say it's easy, but I could tell you one thing. People who think they can't do this, they do really well on it. Right. So like my missus, she is a better trader than me. I mean, she handles the big account. I took the small one now because my emotions just go crazy. I'm getting angry, like losing, right. and then right. you know all the things that we spoke about. Mm -hmm. So it's it's I, I think anyone can it's not for everyone, but anyone can do it. Mm. Right, and the advice I'd always give to people is: you never know if you have a knack for this until you until give you it. Try it. Yeah. This yeah. is yeah. it. Yeah. 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 No, it's true, man. That's it, man. Thank you for coming through, man. I respect it, man. Love for coming up, man. As Shay, thank you so much for, no for having me. Any showing time, me love, man. you guys yeah. are just any uh, time, bro. It's incredible to be here. And You've just empowered to... men without even trust knowing. me. You've empowered me. Oh man, in a big way. Appreciate that. Trust me, the feedback will be crazy.